Welcome to the Experts in Medicine talk series. This series is brought to you by Handbooks in Healthcare, leading publisher of clinical pocket references by the world leading medical experts. Today we are joined by Antonio Gatto Jr., leading expert in atherosclerosis and lipoprotein research and author of Contemporary Diagnosis and Management of Lipid Disorders. I'm Dr. Antonio Gatto. I'm the dean of the Wild Cornell Medical College in New York City and provost for medical affairs of Cornell University and a professor of medicine. I've been involved in lipid research, uh, atherosclerosis, uh, cardiovascular disease research for almost four decades. And this lipid uh, disorders handbook will address the questions uh, that the physician uh, needs to address today in, in looking at uh, the management and treatment of patients uh, with lipid disorders. Uh, we've seen a great evolution in, in the knowledge in this field uh, over the last four decades. Uh, when I entered the field in the late 1960s, uh, working in the laboratory of Donald Fredrickson and Bob Levy at NIH, uh, we were still sorting out the lipoprotein families, their functions, uh, the different apolipoproteins, how they interacted with the um, how the apolipoproteins interacted with the lipids to form lipoprotein particles. There were studies uh, in whole animals and in humans about the metabolism of the lipoproteins. There's a great deal of interest in a genetically um, determined form of uh, hypercholesterolemia, named familial hypercholesterolemia, and studies with fibroblasts uh, from these patients uh, led Brown, uh, Mike Brown and Joe Goldstein to a discovery of the LDL uh, receptor in the 1970s. Uh, this receptor was either defective or absent in uh, patients with familial hypercholesterolemia, and this gave a great deal of insight as to how the cholesterol was removed from the blood and how lipoproteins and cholesterol were metabolism. Uh, this opened a way of understanding a new class of drugs, the statins, uh, which uh, were discovered uh, by Dr. Kira Indo in the 1970s. And this, uh, these discoveries uh, and the discovery and the introduction of the statins have completely changed the way that uh, we approach the treatment of hyperlipidemia, and the treatment and prevention of coronary heart disease. The coronary primary prevention trial, uh, which was carried out uh, between the mid-70s and the, and the mid-80s, established uh, using a resin cholestyramine that in severely hypercholesterolemic males in a primary prevention study that lowering LDL would reduce coronary events. And Brown and Goldstein's discovery of the LDL receptor and Dr. Indo's uh, discovery of the statins led to the introduction of the first statin, uh, Mevacor or Lovastatin, September the 2nd, 1987. Dr. Indo's work has just recently been recognized uh, this past week by receiving the Albert and Mary Lasker Award uh, for cl uh, clinical research uh, on the basis of his uh, discovery of the statin. Well, now we have, um, 20 years later, we have a large number of clinical trials, both in primary prevention and in secondary prevention, establishing without doubt that reducing LDL cholesterol will reduce coronary events. Uh, in uh, secondary prevention, will increase uh, the lifespan, will decrease total mortality, decrease cardiovascular deaths, and decrease strokes. Uh, the, da the data for the, this indications is overwhelming in different populations in different parts of the world. Uh, the benefit uh, of statins is explained in large part on the basis of LDL reduction, and uh, LDL is the ultimate, uh, LDL cholesterol is the ultimate surrogate uh, for benefit in reducing cardiovascular risk. A number of trials, including ileal bypass surgery, uh, resins, uh, bile acid sequestrants, uh, diet, as well as statins have shown that reducing cholesterol and LDL uh, will reduce the risk of coronary events. 
there may be additional benefit uh, from other effects of statins or other uh, changes in, in lipids uh, or in inflammation. Uh, raising HDL has, um, is postulated to uh, be associated with a reduction in, in uh, cardiovascular events and CHD risk, although we do not have a definitive trial at this time uh, to establish the benefit of raising HDL. Reducing inflammation as measured uh, in a general sense by reducing high sensitivity uh, CRP uh, may also be an, an additional target uh, in the future. Uh, the JUPITER trial, uh, which will be reported at the American Heart Association, uh, was stopped early. Uh, this was a trial uh, with resuvastatin in, in individuals who had too low a level of LDL to be eligible, uh, eligible uh, for drug therapy by current guidelines. But this trial was stopped early uh, after only about three years, uh, and w uh, we await uh, the presentation of the results at the American Heart Association. Uh, the reason uh, that um, the trial was stopped uh, is that in these individuals with relatively normal levels of cholesterol and LDL, but who were selected on the basis of a higher level, a high level of uh, high sensitivity CRP, uh, there was an, uh, such a reduction in events uh, that the primary endpoint was reached uh, two years ahead of, at least two years ahead of time. So as a physician uh, looks uh, today at uh, the, uh, the data that have been collected from the statin trials and the other trials, uh, what he or she sees are data that point to benefit at lower and lower levels of LDL. Uh, when this has resulted in the, the targets uh, being re-evaluated, uh, the target now is 100 uh, milligrams per deciliter uh, without any argument or any question in uh, all individuals, uh, high-risk individuals, with an optional target being 70. Uh, and based uh, on the JUPITER trial, uh, once those data are available, we may see a resetting of uh, the LDL target for primary prevention. Currently, uh, it is about uh, the most uh, generally accepted level is 130, although the practice of most cardiologists uh, is to try to get everybody uh, who's thought to, to uh, be above um, at average risk or above at an LDL below 100. There may be additional targets added in the future uh, as we, we get more information about whether CRP should be a target of treatment uh, we may get data uh, on agents which specifically target HDL, raising HDL, uh, trials uh, uh, with um, cholesterol ester transfer protein inhibitors uh, are underway. A trial with one such uh, agent, torcetropib, was stopped because of toxicity. Uh, whether or not uh, this approach will turn out uh, to be feasible in the long run remains to be determined. So we have gone a long way over the last four decades in this field. Uh, there are new um, agents uh, that have been introduced, new mechanisms of action, the most recently being azetamide, uh, which was introduced uh, uh, as an agent uh, for lowering LDL and cholesterol based on inhibiting the absorption of cholesterol uh, from the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, the initial trials uh, with uh, uh, azetamibe, uh, which have been reported, uh, the enhanced trial and the SEAS trial, have uh, uh, not been targeted toward clinical events. And until we have the clinical events data, which will not be available for several, several more years, it will be difficult uh, to judge um, where um, or, or the effect of adding azetamibe on top of a statin, uh, how much additional benefit uh, one gets in reducing uh, cardiovascular risk. So this is a rapidly moving, a rapidly evolving field, but there's a solid basis of knowledge uh, on which the physician can rely in treating patients. Uh, and we attempt uh, in this lipid disorders handbook, uh, this most updated version, to give the physician the tools and the information needed to diagnose and manage these disorders.
Thanks for tuning in to the Experts in Medicine talk series, brought to you by Handbooks in Healthcare. If you are interested in purchasing copies of this or any other titles by Handbooks in Healthcare, please call 800-860-9544 or email custserve at hhcbooks.com. All Handbooks in Healthcare titles retail for under $25 a copy and can be purchased in bulk quantities at substantial discounts. Handbooks in Healthcare can be found on the web at www.hhcbooks.com.